Hey guys, this is Kaz, and we're back here with another tutorial video. This time we're looking at the color edit tool for creating and editing your own costume colors for Street Fighter V on PC. This is uh, basically the process I use for all my color mods that I put out. Uh, we're going to be using the Mod Manager tool for installation because it just makes it a lot easier to kind of test the files while you're working on them. The color edit tool itself is super easy to learn once you have it open, but before we can actually do that, we have to extract all of the game files first. This is just a one-time process that you got to do before you're able to access the files that we need. So let's uh, begin by downloading Quick BMS from the link in the description. That is the program we're going to use to extract all the game files so we can work on them. So once that file is downloaded, go ahead and extract it to its own folder anywhere you want. Next we want to grab all the Street Fighter V pack files from the Steam directory so we can extract them into an editable format. So you want to go ahead and navigate to this path which is actually where the game is installed. And as you'll see once we're inside this pack folder, we've got a list of all the pack files. It's pretty large but you want to go ahead and copy all of these pack files and paste them into the folder that you extracted the Quick BMS program to. It could take a few minutes, but once all the files have finished pasting, run the Quick BMS 4GB file exe. And a command window will open and will ask you to select the BMS script or plugin to use. Just select the sf5.bms file that's already inside the Quick BMS folder. This process can take a while, so feel free to continue the tutorial while that's going on, and we'll continue to work on the next steps. Alright, while those files are extracting, we're going to go ahead and create our folder that we're going to have uh, Mod Manager read, so it actually knows where to look for these color files when we're launching the game. Hopefully you guys already have a little experience working with Mod Manager, but if you don't, please check out the Mod Manager installation video I have on my channel. That'll give you a good general idea how to get the program up and running. Uh, it'll make the next steps here a little more clear. Inside your mod manager folder where you have your mods installed, we're going to create a new blank folder for the colors you're going to be working on. Uh, for this example, let's use Ibuki's story costume, which is C2. And then we want to verify that the path looks correct. So we got where mod manager is installed, slash games, Street Fighter V, mods, and then our new folder, the Buki C2 colors, which is blank right now. That's fine. And since your game files are probably still being extracted, let's go ahead and download the color edit tool from the link in the description. It doesn't matter where you download the file to, but once the download's complete, just extract it to its own folder anywhere you want. And once you extract it, you'll notice there are two versions of the color edit tool. One is used for costumes with 10 colors, while the other is used for costumes with 15 colors. And they're clearly labeled so you know which is which. Uh, at this point in the game, only the default costumes contain 15 colors, and all the other costumes contain 10. So that should give you a good idea of which version to launch. Once your game files have been extracted from Quick BMS, let's go ahead and go back and see what's been outputted. You'll notice the Street Fighter game directory has now been established. And navigate to Street Fighter V Content Kara, and these are all of the character folders. You can use this simple conversion chart to see which folder is whose. And looking at the chart, we see that Abuki's character code is BAE. So we're going to go ahead and click into that BAE folder and navigate to her Skelmesh folder. Inside that folder, you will see several folders labeled numerically. 010203. These are all the different costumes. So 01 folder is always going to be the default costume. 02 is always going to be the story mode costume. And since we're going to be editing the colors for her C2 costume, let's go ahead and open up her 02 folder. And you'll notice within this data asset folder there is a customized setting file. This is the only file that we need. This is controls all of the costume colors. So we just want to replicate a file path to this file within our mod manager folder that we created. 
So for this example, after copying over the customized settings file, the final path is going to look like this. We got our Mod Manager installation folder, Games, Street Fighter V, Mods, Abuki C2 Colors, which is the folder that we created, and now to replicate the file path to the customized setting file, we're going to go ahead and add the folders Street Fighter V, Content, Para, BAE for Abuki, Spell Mesh, Zero Two for her second costume, Data Asset, and then all that's going to be in that folder is the customized setting new asset file. And now we have our working folder in Mod Manager and we're ready to start working on colors. Since I'm editing Costume 2 in this example, and Costume 2 always contains 10 colors, I'm going to launch the 10 color version of the Color Edit tool. Once the tool is open, you can go ahead and click this little button here next to the X with three dots on it, it's the Open button. And we're going to navigate to that folder that we just created with the customized setting file in it. So you're going to go to your Mod Manager folder, Game, Street Fighter V, Mods, and Blue C2 Colors, Street Fighter V, Content, Terra, EAE, Scale Mesh, Zero Two, Data Asset. And then if in this window you don't see a file, click this drop down and click All Files, and it'll pop up. And immediately you're going to see the first color slot is loaded with all the changeable colors labeled. And generally speaking, when you open this program and you load your color file, make sure that the height of the window is stretched so you can always see the last changeable item. Some people have like 20 items that you can change and if you don't expand the window a little bit more you may not see them all. You can bounce around, check out all the different sets, and from there you just simply click on the one you want to change. Change the color, hit OK. It's pretty self-explanatory from here. Once you're ready to preview your changes, just click the Backup and Save button. This automatically saves the previously edited version under a different file name. So if you ever fuck something up, you can kind of just revert back to the previous file. And now to test the color in game, we're going to go ahead and open our Mod Manager. We're going to click the Manage Mods button up in the right corner. Click the Refresh button just to make sure it's reading the updated list of your mods. Find your new folder, in this example for me it's going to be a Buki C2 Colors. Click it, make sure there's a check mark next to it. Menu. And then go ahead and launch the game and we're ready to test it out. For each time you close the game and make color revisions, you're going to want to uninstall and reinstall the mod again through Mod Manager just to make sure the newest revisions are being loaded. Then you're going to have to launch the game again. Um, there's no way to refresh the files while the game's already running. It kind of seems like a pain in the ass, but once you do it a few times, you'll get a system down. It, it's, it doesn't take much time. Once you're completely done with all of your color editing, you can navigate back to your mod folder that has the customized setting file in it, and delete any of the backup files that you're not going to use anymore. These can kind of stack up over time. As I said, every time you hit that backup and save, it's going to back up a version of it. So you might have like 30 backups by the time you're done working on your file. Just before you distribute the mod or you finalize, you just want to delete any you know, extra files. So you're keeping the mod as small in file size as possible. Uh, it makes it easier to share with other people. It's just a good practice to do all around. Alright, thanks so much for bearing with me guys. I know that was a lot of information. But most of that stuff you only have to do the first time. And from there on out, it's pretty easy. Alright guys, that's it for the basics. That should be enough to get you up and running and able to change your colors and see them in-game. However, there are a lot of little tips and tricks I'd like to share with you as well that it may help you get your end results a little faster. Here's just some general information about the saturation and luminance or the brightness of the colors you're choosing. For the most bold, bright colors, you're always going to want to choose something near the top of the color spectrum. This is going to have the most saturation. As you'll see, once you get uh, kind of further down, it adds more gray, takes out the color, desaturates it. So the boldest colors, you're going to want to be on the top, and you're going to want to have the slider here for brightness roughly in the middle. You'll see, you know, this is actually luminance, so all the way up for white is 240, black is zero, so that means right in the middle is going to be 120, and that's going to be the most bold, bright 
the form of that color. If you try to go add more luminance to the color, it's basically just going to add more white. It's not going to make your color brighter, it's just going to add more white. And going down, of course, makes it darker. So if you were going for like a army combat fatigues, um, you wouldn't want to use the bright green. You want to go somewhere desaturated, take out some of those colors, and then maybe go a little darker. And I'll kind of show you a rough idea of what you're going to see in the game. And hopefully that gives you a better idea of where to start with your color choices. And next I'm going to show you how to duplicate colors for comparison's sake. For example, I might be working on a color and I've tried a couple different hair colors on one set and I like and I can't decide which I like better. So I'm going to go ahead and find another slot that I know I, I want to customize or that I don't want so I can kind of play with this slot right now. We'll say in this example I want to use slot 2 and make a copy of what's on slot 1 and then just change one thing for comparison's sake. So I'm going to highlight the slot that I want, slot 2. And I'm going to say copy the colors from slot 1. Now as you'll see, costume 1 and 2 are both using the same colors here. And from here I can, you know, make a color change to say the hair color, see what it looks like red. And now I got one version that's red, one version that's black. I can take them both in game, put them side by side, figure out which one I like best, and then can the other one. This helps a lot. Sometimes you kind of go back and forth in game. You don't really know which one you prefer. It helps to see them side by side. Sometimes you can tell instantly which one you want to get rid of. Um, it helps me. I hope it helps you. Now I'm going to show you how to mark colors for multiple uses. This is super easy. Uh, say I want to use her red purse and make her dress the same color as her purse. Uh, you know, once you got your color here, add two custom colors. This is going to store it in a little custom section down here. Click OK. Now I can go to cloth. It's in the custom colors. And now my, you know, the purse and the dress matches exactly the same colors. That one's super easy. It's just to keep things consistent, keep your colors matching. Sometimes you might also see a skin color that you like on one costume and you want to use it on another. That's another good time. Add it to the custom colors. You know, navigate to your different costume and apply that same skin color. The next tip here is going to show you how to test for unknown colors. And these are basically labels that you don't know what the hell they're describing. You'll see this thing, Kamimo, I don't know what the hell that is. So how do I know what color I want to change it to? Well, you might not, so if you start by making it a really bold color, like a neon green, and then go ahead and test it in game, You'll stand out like sore thumb, you'll be able to see, alright, that's the color that is Kamiho or whatever the hell. So now I know everything that I make green, I want to change to whatever color. Sometimes the labels would be really weird too, like a lot of the times for the girl's lip color, it says rip instead of lip. Uh, that confused me a couple times, but once you see that and you know what the hell it means, uh, it's easier to kind of identify. But yeah, you can always use some bold colors to test the color slots in the game to see exactly what you're changing. There is a slight discrepancy between the colors that you see in the color edit tool and the colors that you're seeing in the game. For example, if I try to choose a pure green like this, this is actually going to look like a blue green when I go in game. It's going to look something like that. So you want to always choose colors that are slightly to the left of what you actually want. Another example, if I want yellow, this may look like it'll be yellow, but that would actually show yellow green. So if I want this to be yellow, I'm going to go slightly further into the orange spectrum than I would originally think. That would probably appear closer to yellow. Again, this looks like orange, but I would want to go further left. That would actually be a bright orange, and then of course your bright red. So play with that if you're not getting the exact colors you want offset them a little further to the left and I think they'll be a little more accurate to what you're looking for. Skin color is another weird one. There are actually files which allow light to pass through the character under their skin and kind of highlight their veins. So all characters kind of have this red 
skeletal version on your nuclear skin that is kind of showing through their skin. To see what I mean, if you tried to go with all black skin, or as I've, I've tried to do before, kind of like, you know, an African colored, like dark brown skin, it won't look dark brown, it'll look dark red. If it shows red in the game, the further dark you try to make the skin, it's going to become more, more red. It's basically draining out the flesh tone and allowing you to see the red, you know, skeletal frame underneath. Making skin color lighter works a little easier. You can go brighter and it looks okay. It doesn't, uh, it'll actually turn all white if you go all the way to the top. But again, you can't make brown skin. You can't make real tan skin or it'll start getting red. So that's just something to be aware of. Play around with the saturation too. If your, if your character looks too bright yellow or something, you know, tone it down a notch, go more into the reds. Make sure the brightness isn't up too high, make sure all the detail stays in the skin texture. If you take all those things into consideration, you should be able to find some skin colors you like working with. And as I mentioned before, once you find one, you can add them to your custom colors, and it makes it easier to distribute to the other color slots. Alright guys, for this next tip, I'm going to show you how to use the Street Fighter V's windowed mode to help kind of proof your colors. This helps a ton. Uh, if you're on the main menu, go into Options and go into graphic settings. Turn this full screen mode to off. And what this is going to do is allow you to actually open the color edit tool window in front of the game. This is super helpful for checking your colors. Um, like I can look at her dress, see the exact color of red that I have saved in the tool. And then from there, you know, go brighter or darker depending on what I want. And as I mentioned in the, uh, the previous tip, how the colors will kind of look different than in the tool. You know, now you can see, alright, that is the shade of green I wanted. I want to try something slightly more blue, and kind of, you know, go a little bit further into the blues. Save it, and that's escape. So yeah, this is just a great way to kind of work on the colors while you're looking directly at it. Super helpful. And then guys, for this last tip, this is kind of important too, when you're checking the colors and you're working on them. I always go to the training stage while I'm working on colors because it has the most neutral lighting, I'd say. So you don't want to choose a stage that the lighting is heavily affecting all the colors on your outfit because then, you know, you might change them according to that and then you'll be playing on the training stage and your colors will look completely different than what you want. So I suggest always building the colors while your characters are on the training stage. I think this will just give you a, a, a good representation of how they'll kind of look across all the stages and all the lighting. And that's it guys, I, I hope that helps you out, thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for subscribing, I appreciate all the support for sure, uh, I really love working on these mods so I'm definitely going to keep cranking them out. One thing I did forget to mention is how to change those little square previews of the costume colors on the selection screen, so uh, I'll do another video for that if you're interested. Alright, thanks so much for the support guys, there's plenty more to come. As you saw, the Christmas costumes came out, so that's more mod slots to use. Okuma's around the corner, he looks awesome. So, plenty more to come. Till next time, peace out.